In this video, I'll demonstrate and explain some features that provide smooth motion when using multi-axis mechanisms. Hi, I am Micah Studeman. Here's a quick preview. Transition modes can be used to connect two move segments together to create one smooth motion. A variety of transition modes are available for this purpose. Collinearity defines whether two segments are linear or not. This allows the controller in certain situations to smoothly transition between multiple microsegments. Path mode also creates smooth motion between microsegments by allowing the mechanism to accelerate and decelerate over multiple micro move segments. S curve applies a filter to the controller position output, which smooths out the velocity ripple when moving between non collinear segments. The end result is smooth mechanism motion that is delayed by the S curve filter setting. Now let's look at this in a little more detail. To talk about smooth motion, we first have to review how normal multi-axis coordinated motion is created. Just like a single axis mechanism, there are relative and absolute moves that can be used to move the mechanism. For multi-axis coordinated systems, there are three types of moves. There are circular, direct, and linear moves. Each move from point to point is considered a segment. When a motion function block executes, that motion segment is added to the buffer. The segment then moves through the buffer until the controller processes it and moves the actual motors. How these segments are joined determines visually and mechanically how the mechanism is going to perform. The following sections are going to show different ways these segments can be connected. For these features to work, the MPIC controller needs to know how to blend the segments together. The exact way this is done is defined by the features that are being used. Transition modes are a simple first step to smoothly join two motion segments together. Multiple transition modes are available depending upon how much smoothing is required. TM None is your basic disabled transition mode. The motion path is not modified in any way and the motion may appear to be jerky or harsh because the TCP velocity is going to zero through each corner. Most smoothing operations can change position data between the motion segments, so smooth motion can be obtained. Some applications, like path following and cutting, require exact motion so the part or path comes out exactly as defined by the designer. TM None is the required blending mode for these types of applications. The upcoming transition modes modify the position data between the two segments. TM Start Velocity adjusts the velocity as the TCP, otherwise known as Tool Center Point, moves between the segments. Looking at this diagram, the TCP is moving at a set velocity until it reaches one of the hexagon corners. The TCP slows down to a defined percentage of the starting velocity, and a new motion segment, or segments, are added to maintain that velocity around the corner. This rounds the corner a little because a sharp corner requires a sharp change in velocity. For pick and place applications, this is okay because the endpoints need to be precise, but the moves to get there do not need to be. The TM constant velocity transition mode is similar to TM start velocity, but instead of slowing down to a percentage of the start velocity, it slows down to a percentage of the next segment's velocity. Depending on if the next segment's velocity is slower or faster, the corner position may vary. This potentially could round the transition corners a lot, but again, for a pick and place application, this is fine. The TM corner distance transition mode doesn't look at velocity when determining how to transition. Instead, it defines two transition points that are D distance from the corner created by the two segments. The velocity is automatically adjusted so that a parabolic transition is produced between the two defined points. This provides a consistent and repeatable transition. The TM max corner distance transition builds upon the TM corner distance mode. Instead of defining a hard start point D, the user defines a max position D max from the next segment starting point. The controller will try to get as close to the corner while keeping the current velocity without exceeding the acceleration and max distance constraints. If the transition would exceed the max distance specified, 
the velocity would need to be adjusted to stay within the transition distance parameter. This mode allows the user to keep the transitions within a certain position tolerance. The Tmax Corner Deviation Transition mode is similar to Tmax Corner Distance. The Tmax Corner Deviation defines the max distance between the apex of the simulated segments and the start point of the next segment. This allows the user to limit the distance between the transition segments and the exact corner of the motion path. This is the most common transition mode that is used for pick and place applications. The TM MLX transition mode is used specifically for blending two motion segments on six axis articulated robots that are remote hosted over Ethernet IP. This transition mode has eight settings that are predefined in the robot controller for blending. If smooth motion is required after transition modes are added, the collinearity limit can be adjusted. Collinearity defines whether two segments are linear or tangent to each other. Collinear segments do not require blending to transition between them. Collinearity in certain applications can be modified to allow smooth motion when segments are not perfectly collinear. This feature is handled both at the firmware level and at the application level. At the firmware level, the collinearity setting adjusts whether the transition mode is used or whether the segments are connected without adjustment. The collinearity setting is in degrees. For instance, look at the following scenario. The following part has two half circles that are made up of many small straight lines. Because straight lines are being used to make up the curve, if the collinearity setting is set too low, the mechanism will not blend between the multiple straight lines. The graph on the left shows the X and Y positions of the mechanism. The graph on the right shows the mechanism velocities during the motion. With the collinearity value set to 0.2 degrees, all of the segments are seen as non-collinear, so a transition is used between all segments. The two big curves are made up of small straight line segments. Since each segment is seen as being non-collinear, the velocity is constantly adjusting to connect between each point. Visually, this causes the motion to appear jagged. When moving between the six larger straight line segments, the transition mode is applied so the corners are rounded and the velocity looks smooth. If the collinearity setting is increased so that the multiple line segments are seen as linear segments, then the following motion occurs. The motion path appears to be the same, but when considering the velocity, it has changed. Since the small microsegments that make up the big curves are seen as collinear, there are no transitions added and the velocity does not vary as much. The corners appear to be one curve instead of multiple microsegments. Less time is also taken creating the part because the curve motion does not need to adjust velocity as much. Since the six longer lines are still considered non-collinear, Transition segments are added to round the corners. The collinearity setting can be set larger so that every segment is seen as collinear. This can be useful to a certain extent when working with path following and cutting applications. Using the same example, if the collinearity is set to 180 degrees, which is larger than all the segment angles in the part file, no transition segments are added. The velocity during the six longer straight segments changes very quickly to create a sharp corner. More acceleration is needed to make the instant velocity change so the corner doesn't blend smoothly, but the motion path is preserved. For path following and cutting, this is okay as long as the tool head is rigid enough to not oscillate with the acceleration changes. The application collinearity setting is similar but instead of activating the transition mode, when not collinear, it stops running new segments in the motion buffer until the current segment ends and sets path mode to zero. Using the same example path as before, if the application collinearity is set to 10 degrees, the following motion occurs. Looking at the graph on the right, during the eight hard corners, the velocity pretty much goes to zero thus creating the hard corner. Comparing application collinearity to firmware collinearity with the same settings, there is a difference. 
The firmware collinearity setting applies the transition mode, which rounds the corner, where the application collinearity setting keeps the corner but brings the tool end to a stop before starting the next segment. The micro moves during the curve are handled the same way because they are seen as collinear. The application collinearity setting is recommended for path following and cutting because it maintains the true motion profile. Path mode relies on segments being collinear to perform its function. Path mode is a feature that allows many microsegments to occur without requiring high acceleration to get to the specified velocity. Here is an illustration of how path mode works. The current XY position path is defined as multiple microsegments. With path mode disabled, the velocity needs to be reached for every point thus requiring higher acceleration and makes the motion choppy. When path mode is enabled, the first couple of segments, defined by the mechanism acceleration rate, are used to accelerate the TCP head to the required velocity which is held through the other motion segments. Path mode will also decelerate over multiple points when a non-collinear segment is encountered. These segments must be collinear for path mode to accelerate through. Path mode is part of the move options input that is on all of the group motion function blocks. This allows the controller to look ahead at upcoming segments so that it can smoothly accelerate to the required velocity through those segments. Group parameters 2203, buffer minimum, and 2204, look ahead, can be adjusted to increase the amount of points path mode uses to reach the required velocity. S-curves have been implemented for single axis motion to smooth acceleration and deceleration. This same concept is added to the TCP motion to make it look smoother. S-curves are created when an averaging filter is applied to the TCP tool center point motion to reduce the harsh acceleration that can occur with shorter motion segments. For example, the graph on the left shows the TCP XY position. The blue line on the right side shows the TCP velocity over time when the S-curve function is disabled. During the two large half circles, the velocity is inconsistent, and when coming into the eight hard corners, the velocity overshoots. The red line shows the TCP velocity when the S-curve function is enabled. During the two large half circles, the velocity is tighter and less erratic. During the eight hard corners, the velocity does not overshoot. One downside to enabling S-curve is that the part will take a little longer to be created as seen by the velocity graph. This is because the S-curve is a filter which looks at position data and adjusts the velocity to smooth out the motion. This function can be used in any coordinate system except for the axis coordinate system, otherwise known as ACS. So applications that are pick and place are recommended because path motion is not as critical. The S-curve can be adjusted using group parameters 2701 and 2110, along with the max filter sample setting in the group section of the hardware configuration. Thanks for watching this video. Go to yaskawa.com slash IECSW to download the latest version of Motionworks IEC3 and try out these features yourself with a 30-day demo.